सराशव सरंभा शंकराचार्य मध्यमा हस्मराचार्य पर्यता वंदे गुरुपरंपरा ओम थैंक यू फॉर इनवाइटिंग मी एंड it is an absolute joy it's wonderful to come and join all of you here for this wonderful celebration as i'm walking in the door i see so many old friends when i come here i see my guru bhais guru bahans uh, my brother and sister swamis i see the board members who i remember coming here from the 1980s onwards and all of you it really at least for me feels like a family reunion only our family has gotten a little bit <laughs> a little bit larger over the years which is absolutely wonderful and anyway, it's a delight to uh, spend today uh, with all of you in this uh, great celebration tell me when you um tell your friends and family members that you're coming here to Salisbury Pennsylvania to Arshavidya Gurukulam and they ask you oh wh- what do you do what do you do first of all they ask what is Arshavidya Gurukulam and you might give the short answer which is it's an ashram it's a retreat center it's a spiritual teaching place and then the second question is oh what do you do there and the standard answer is is problematic because you come and you say oh we go there to study vedanta and they say what what, what for <laughs> and if you think about it how many many of you have spent how many years in school in college graduate studies you've already studied so much now you're going here to study vedanta and many of you know that it's kind of a misnomer we use that term all the time and there's nothing wrong with the term but it does give a wrong impression because the is something you may have thought of before if you study history the subject matter is history if you study mathematics the subject matter is of course mathematics but when you study vedanta is the stud is the subject matter really vedanta i thought the subject matter is your true self your true nature and the relationship between that true nature and everything else that exists really speaking the subject matter of vedanta advaita vedanta is your true self the self it's more accurate instead of saying you're coming here to do to study vedanta it would be more accurate to say you're coming here to do atma vichara that's a term that shankaracharya would use atma vichara vichara means inquiry and inquiry into atma your true self your true nature but now we've got another problem because if you tell your friends and family members oh i'm going to arshavidya gurukulam to do atma vichara then they say what does that mean and he says oh i i want to know who i am i want to know myself to which they reply you don't know who you are after all this time <laughs> you still don't know who you are <clears throat> that reminds me of a, a this is a true anecdote when i was um yeah you know, still in my i think 20s or 30s i was visiting my mother reading one of puja swamiji's books the title of the book was who am i so she she asked what are you reading and, and i show her the book who am i and she says you don't know who you are i can tell you who you are you're my son it was pretty obvious to her yet atma vichara 
is such a profound inquiry. Many of the earlier speakers have shown you how crucial it is to be engaged in a process of spiritual growth. And let me share with you a, a, a favorite observation about why we don't study Vedanta. In fact, when I start a new class at our, at our ashram, I often begin each class by saying, of a new text, a new topic, I often begin by saying, if you've come here to study Vedanta, you're wasting your time. And I was very fond of a, of a statement Swami Satchidananda said, and that is, if I understood you correctly, if you're only doing shravana, if you're only studying scriptures, you can have, what is your term, Vedantic obesity? <laughs> I love that. <laughs> Vedantic obesity means you get all puffed up with this teaching, with this knowledge. <clears throat> what, there's a, in American English, where they say, it's not a compliment when they say, you're full of it. <laughs> <laughs> not very nice. So let, let's be very clear. We are not here to study Vedanta. We are here to undergo this process of, of self-inquiry, leading, as some of our, our speakers have said, leading to moksha, leading to inner freedom. Um, that inner inquiry requires guidance. Anytime we are on some kind of journey, a spiritual journey, we need some guidance. And the, the favorite metaphor that I said I would share with you is this. The contents of a history book is history. The contents of a mathematics book is mathematics. The contents of our scriptures is utterly unlike all those books because the contents of our scriptures is not information. And that's the problem. When we look at Vedanta as a subject matter and we consume all the information found in those scriptures, then we end up with Vedantic obesity. This one. <laughs> it's, it's a big problem. How to avoid the problem. I like that term. How to avoid Vedantic obesity. And that is... The way to do so is to use our scriptures not as a source of information, information that you consume, but rather to use our scriptures as they were intended to be used. And this is actually a very technical topic, we won't go into it, but really speaking, the information found in our scriptures is secondary. The primary purpose of those scriptures is to lead you or guide you to making a, a particular discovery. The word we use in Sanskrit is prakriya, methodology. What's valuable about Vedanta is not what it says, but how it says, how it leads you step by step on this journey of, of self-inquiry. So instead of looking at the, our scriptures as a, like a history book or mathematics book, it's, I think, more helpful to look at our scriptures as being a roadmap. Now, my assistant tells me that I shouldn't use this metaphor anymore because no one uses roadmaps. <laughs> You know, on your phone and in your car, everyone has an automatic map, and that map always shows you the directions you're going, the map shows you where you are. But just 20 years ago, there were no such devices. Road map means, you know, remember, you had to unfold this big complicated thing, and then you had to figure out which side is up. <laughs> and then you have to figure out 
t look at this. A roadmap is absolutely useless unless you know where you already are. So you have to find <laughs> where are you on this huge complicated roadmap and then find your way along. Now that's a pretty kind of a daunting way of explaining a roadmap. Our scriptures are not so confusing as those old fashioned paper roadmaps. And the reason, by the way, those roadmaps are our scriptures, right? And the basis of that metaphor, by the way, is just like the information in a roadmap is less important. Information roadmaps will tell you the names of streets, the populations of cities, and all of that detail. But tell me, what's more important about that roadmap, the information contained within, or its ability to guide you to your destination? Obviously, that's the purpose of a roadmap in the same way. There's plenty of information in our scriptures, lots. That's the source of that Vedantic obesity. But instead of consuming all that information, we have the opportunity to use the scriptures as they were meant to be used, and that is to guide us on a process of atma vichara, self-inquiry. And I think the best part of that is, is this. Those scriptures give us the opportunity to follow in the footsteps of the ancient rishis, so to speak. The problem is the roadmap, the ancient script, the ancient rishis left behind, the roadmap is in Sanskrit. Oh, not only that, but it's full of deep and profound spiritual teachings which are not easily grasped. You know, it really reflects the complexity of looking at that big paper map and not even knowing where to begin when you try to find your, your, where you are on that paper map. So the advantage we have is this. We, we have the roadmap, we have the scriptures, and we have something else extremely important. And that is, we have wonderful acharyas, wonderful teachers, who don't make you read the roadmap on your own, but they explain. When you turn here, go there, go for one mile, and then make a right turn. So we have acharyas, teachers, to guide us every step of the way. And these teachers are extraordinary teachers. They know, they have used the roadmap for themselves to discover what the ancient rishis discovered. They know the roadmap inside and out. In India, have you ever had the experience, you find a rickshaw wala or taxi wala and you say you want to go to this particular place and you ask the taxi wala, Rasa janta hai? Do, do, do you know the way? And of course, the, the taxi wala is, ha ha, ji, aye, aye. <laughs> you know, get, yes, I know, please get into my taxi. And then you, pr then you proceed to get completely lost for the next three hours. <laughs> Not an uncommon experience. How different it is here to have such wonderful teachers who won't allow you to get lost. They will take you step by step by step, using the roadmap in the form of the ancient scriptures to lead you to discover exactly what the ancient rishis discovered. Thank you. Om. Please keep watch and subscribe US1 TV.